Morning you guys, it's Karen and I wanted to come and talk to you about this. This is Slippery Elm, Slippery Elm, or these are Slippery Elm supplements. I'll show you what, you don't need to get that many out, what the capsule size is like. It is, I don't know when, where, how's the best way to show you, but they're, they're a kind of regular size capsule. Um, and I have been using these for various different things for a couple of years actually, and recently found something else they worked really well on so i thought i'd come and tell you about them in case it could help somebody else out there because i think there's very few there's very few supplements i have found that are amazing um i'm always looking for a really big result and like i have tried every supplement going for migraine <laughs> as you can imagine um and i've tried hundreds and hundreds of supplements over the years um and there's only been some like off the top of my head ginger pumpkin oil pumpkin seed oil what else there's not very many that i can say that really works for this and i really believe in it you know but slippery elm has has kind of dropped into that category so i wrote some notes down last night um slippery elm is the inner bark of a tree and when that bark is mixed with water any water in your system or a glass of water it becomes a gel um, and that gel is known to coat and protect the digestive tract. And when I first heard about this, I wasn't getting it for me. I was getting it for Watson. And it was known as and talked about as a bandage for the digestive tract. And I really liked that. That really appealed to me. That sold it to me because Watson had... Oh, well, I'll tell you about Watson. Anyway, um, I'll tell you about Watson and his results in a moment and the, the whole results I've had. But it's known to coat and soothe an inflamed digestive tract. Um, a 2010 study showed that it helped with a type of IBS, um, but mi it was mixed with other natural substances. I was looking at what was the research behind this. There is different research studies, but that one was really good. But it was this mixed with other substances. Um, the cost of this one is £14. Pound, um, there's 60 capsules. These are 300 milligrams, I think. Oh, no, these are the 400 milligrams. I think I couldn't find these, and the ones I'm linking are 300. The dose in studies um, that show that it works is using 300 three times a day, I believe. 300 times three, yeah. 300 milligrams three times a day is the kind of recommended dose for things like IBS or things where you are struggling sort of all day, every day. So that would mean that this was 20... Um, 20 days dosage for 14 pounds so it's not too bad the powder is cheaper you can actually buy the powder um, and mix that with water if you want that's something that I just don't think I would tolerate very well um, so I've said probably going to put in the title slippery elm versus omeprazole because I had read that this had the same kind of action as omeprazole but actually I don't think it does at all this is more of a treatment for the resulting inflammation in your digestive tract rather than reducing the acid in your stomach which is what omeprazole does so omeprazole and i'm actually on lansoprazole now um, i've been on omeprazole in the past reduces the acid in your stomach therefore to try and stop the damage caused by the acid the problem with that because you think well that's good it's actually treating the issue at its base but is that there are other problems that come with having low stomach acid so the actions of a slippery elm supplement are that it increases the mucus in the system and that's what kind of coats that coats the tract um, so the side effects from omeprazole um they're listed as nausea bad taste headaches and this is all just short-term effects i ha didn't have any of these i've never had nausea no that's not true i had a bad taste i had a kind of metal taste in my mouth when i was on omeprazole years ago um, but i didn't get headaches from them necessarily i have tried to come off all um proton pump inhibitors, which is what omeprazole and lansoprazole are, to see if that affected my migraine, and it didn't, but um, I didn't, so I didn't get headaches from them. Long term, though, is more of the concern for me with lansoprazole and omeprazole, um, and I used to be on a lot higher dose. I've now, I'm now only on 15 milligrams. I used to be on 30. Um, the long term risks are that you can get, you're more likely to get bone fractures from being on this and you are more likely to get gut infections like um, C. diff and that kind of thing. You're also more likely to get a vit vitamin B12 deficiency, which, which could make you kind of lack energy and whatnot. 
amongst other things. So there's quite a few kind of not so great effects from, from taking omeprazole and lansoprazole, but I'm, I'm kind of happy with the 15 milligrams that I'm on now. I'm, I'm glad that I reduced it and I would love to come off it, but I've, I haven't managed and I haven't tried yet to take just slippery L. So I'm kind of happy where I'm at with um, just taking the 15 milligrams of lansoprazole. But of course, it would be ideal if I could just not take it at all. And if at any point I get my diet less spicy, less rich and give a go with maybe just slippery elm it will be interesting to see what happens um side effects from slippery elm there aren't any known side effects other than well it's not really a side effect but there is an interaction in that um you should take this is it two hours yeah two hours before or after other medication because because it coats the digestive system, your other drugs may not absorb as easily. So that's the only thing you need to be aware of with it. So let me tell you why I got this initially. I got it for Watson. So Watson is my dog, he's a Labradoodle, and he has inflammatory bowel disease. Um, that was diagnosed a few years ago. So we didn't know it for the first few years. We didn't know what it was. We knew that he had colitis, i.e. an inflamed digestive system. Um, and he basically had very soft poop and he often had blood in it, um, but also he was in a lot of pain. He would often cry at night, um, and so I now know that was like the cramps in his stomach. And so I was always looking for supplements to give him, and the reason that I said I liked the fact that it was a bandage to the digestive tract, it appealed to me because of him you know, crying in pain. It was something that I could give him that was gonna soothe it, that really appealed to me. So I gave it to him um, and the hope was that it would firm up his, his poop as well. Um, it didn't, I didn't notice that it firmed up his poop. I would say that it made the crying less. It definitely, I think, helped with, I think it helped with his pain levels, but there's not really any way of knowing that because he, he wasn't crying every night, all night. He would go through phases um, and sometimes he could like just, be crying for an hour and then be okay for the rest of the night so I didn't know but I gave it to him anyway what I did see from it and this is probably TMI for some people but you know when you've got a dog you end up talking about poop a lot <laughs> um but I could see the mucus and so it was really Kevin and I would talk about it you know if, if one had taken him out we were always talking about his poop anyway how was his poop was it okay was there any blood that kind of thing and we would tell each other how we'd seen it. And it was basically, it looked like there was a coating around any poop that came out, there was a coating around it of this mucus. But I think that's a good thing because that's exactly what it's saying it does. That's exactly its action. And that can only have been soothing, you know, but it, I don't think it necessarily firmed it up too much um, and did anything more than that. The other kind of experimentation, if you like, that I'd done was I'd given it to Kev because Kev can have tummy problems from spicy foods. So both Kev and I suffer from indigestion, but I've had different problems to Kev in that I get like crushing chest pain if I take an aspirin, for example, and that is because of the inflammation in my digestive tract. Um, oh, do you know, I never, I've never thought about trying this with my aspirin. That's a good idea because aspirin does actually help migraines a little bit, but normally gives me this horrible chest pain anyway uh, so that's something I get the chest pain or I sometimes get heartburn um but what uh, Kev gets stomach problems like a sore stomach if he has like pepperoni or chorizo anything like that anything too spicy and what would happen it was really quite frightening he would wake up in the night kind of choking and it would be um reflux basically so like sick would come up in his throat and sort of choke him and he'd get up and you could hear him like he'd be sick and he could barely breathe it was it's absolutely awful when it happens but he'd also miss out on a lot of sleep from having stomach ache so what I tried more recently because this kind of went off of my radar slippery elm when we got on top of Watson's IBD by giving him raw food and I give him uh, buscapan to slow down the cramps and whatnot I, that kind of went off of my radar um, but yeah, more recently, I gave it to Kev when we were having a meal that we knew might upset his tummy and it helped. It, it didn't completely cure it. And he does take lansoprazole 15 milligrams as well. Um, but normally that wouldn't be enough. Normally he'd need two lansoprazole. And I said to him, rather than taking two lansoprazole, why don't you take one lansoprazole, one of these and see how that works. And it was made it absolutely bearable. It didn't have pain all through the night, didn't lose sleep. He said, I could feel a little bit of, you know, discomfort, but that's it. 
So that was really good to see. And then finally, I tried it on myself. Now the issue that I've had, you may remember me telling you about this, um, and that I had food was burning as it was going down, but it was it was only specific foods, like mostly it was on a Friday night when we had this specific curry. There's a tikka masala. It's not like really, really spicy, but it was just, I could actually feel it from here to here. I could feel it burning inside. So I went to the doctors. They told me to increase my lansoprazole for a while. And then I went back to a lower dose and it still stings going down. And then other food was stinging going down. Um, so I just was kind of avoiding having that particular tikka masala. But I suddenly thought, well, let me try, because we had a sauce in the cupboard. And I said to Kev, let's try it and see if I take a slippery elm um, instead of taking two lansoprazole, if that will help. And it really did. I couldn't feel it burning going down at all. So that has really changed you, know, you can tell that that is helping. Um, so yeah, it's kind of turned into a staple in my cupboard. I haven't given, like I said, it had kind of gone off my radar with Watson. Watson has had, as you know, so many things wrong with him. His stomach, his allergies, his cancer. He's had all sorts of things go wrong with him. So it's no wonder that sometimes, you know, I'll get on top of one thing and that kind of goes to the background and I'm focusing on the other. Um, but it's something that I'd kind of forgotten about. And so I'm so glad that I've remembered it. And any sign of anything with Watson, any sign of tummy pain or if he's sick or if his poop goes soft again, which most of the time it's not at the minute, I can give him one of these. But I can also give him to Kev. I can give him to myself if we know we're having any kind of food that might irritate our digestive tract. Actually, I see on my notes here, I've put that with Watson, it did make his poop slightly firmer. And actually it did because it, it would... I mean, I'm trying to think how I can say it without being too graphic, but it was basically, it was easier to pick up. Um, it did definitely make a little bit of a difference, but not enough. It did, I wouldn't have called it a cure, you know. But I wanted to tell you guys all of that because that is my evidence, if you like. I've got evidence for me, I've got evidence for Kev and evidence for Watson. Um, and so if you have got any kind of digestive trouble, which I think comes to us all as we age, it might be worth getting these, you know, um, because if you can manage either just on these or on less lansoprazole and meprazole, or if you're on a meprazole and that's not enough for you, then you could maybe try and top it up with this. That would be much better for you. At one point I was on 30 milligrams of lansoprazole and a Zantac, and I was taking my Rennies and whatnot. You know, I've had really bad times with indigestion, um, but this is obviously a much healthier way of trying to manage it. So like I said, I think my next thing will be maybe to to try just this, because other than that burning, I don't think I have major issues depending on what I'm eating. But like tonight, we've got fish and vegetables, so I could probably go without a lansoprazole, take one of these and just see how I get on. I think it's just become more of a habit taking that lansoprazole, you know? So um, yeah, I'll let you know how how I get on, but I'll link the, the um, supplements for me, for you. Let me know if you have tried them. Let me know anybody that's has any experience of them, good or bad, and I'll speak to you again soon.